Now, how do we see the future, where we're going from here? Because it sounds like we have all the answer. Actually, we don't. But there is one method that really can be considered by everyone as the most accurate possible method that exists, which is called full configuration interaction. This basically says that we're going to take a linear combination of every permutation that an electron wants to be in and every interaction with the other electrons, we're going to just solve for all of them. And this represents exactly what the quantum mechanics want an electron to be doing. The cost is exponential. The value of this method is fantastic, but for decades, it's been just limited to very, very small examples. But when we are able to solve a problem with this method, we can almost consider that there is no need to go beyond the problem is solved. Recently, in the 50s, some people thought, well, we could solve these equations in an iterative way. So instead of doing all the equations at once, we're just going to start slowly by just doing it incrementally. Additionally, in the 70s, people said, how about instead of just doing that, we would also just take the interactions that contribute the most to our energy. So instead of having a space made of hundreds of billions of possible permutations of the electrons, now we have just a million. A million is still a lot. Yes, the cost is still expensive, but we have supercomputers. We are argon. So it became extremely more easy to apply this very expensive method to very complicated systems and problems. And now we are seeing that with that, and if we combine it to Quantum Monte Carlo, we are actually able to go beyond our wildest dreams in the type of accuracies that we can reach. And this is where we are going with machine learning. We will be able to just use all the data that we have generated using these very accurate methods to either predict the energies of similar molecules or predict the energies of larger molecules. Once the models that we have are able to have enough data to be able to be trained against, we will not have to pay the cost of the quantum Monte Carlo simulations. Then we are developing code at Argon to be able to use machine learning to be able to learn those kernels or parts that are expensive to never call them again and to have machine learning just predict what is the outcome from that kernel. When we are successful at that, we will be able to simulate significantly larger systems at the highest accuracies possible to really reduce the time to solution or being able to achieve extremely high accuracies. We used to be methods that were used to just try to understand after the fact. Now we are able to predict what will happen if we were to change two materials. With the help of machine learning, we're even going beyond. We are now being able to do material design or reverse design, where instead of trying to try multiple materials and see which one work, we are now able to say which property do we want. From the properties, let's just try the materials that fit the property that we are looking for. So we are at the crossing point between computer science, computational science, material science, chemistry. All these are completely focused within computational science.